I think this morning's um, session we came from, uh, which looked at the aromatase inhibitors, has had some really quite important data. Um, Dr. Ingle highlighted data from something called the aromatase inhibitor overview group, which I've had the privilege to, to lead. Um, and we're currently writing up the, the, the data um, with the expectation of submitting them to general clinical oncology next week. So that particular activity brings together the global community of, of groups looking at aromatase inhibitors. And this gave us the first opportunity to show data from bringing together the trials in two cohorts, the what we call the head-to-head or upfront studies of aromatase inhibitor versus tamoxifen for five years, and the two of those. And then the so-called switching trials, where patients have been on tamoxifen for two to three years and then switch for another two to three years on aromatase inhibitors. And what was clear from this overview um, was that in both settings, recurrence-free survival was improved statistically significantly and highly statistically significantly by the aromatase inhibitor in both cohorts. Now, in a way, that, that wasn't surprising because we more or less knew that from the individual trials. I think the important thing here is that bringing these trials together allows us to address questions which we don't have the power to do in individual trials. And that means things like survival, for example. Uh, and in the second of the two cohorts, the switch-in cohort, there was a statistically significant uh, effect on survival and benefit on survival. Um, that wasn't seen in the um, upfront studies. But as Dr. Ingle stressed, and it's really important to, to understand, this is very early days for follow-up in terms of seeing survival benefits. And for tamoxifen, in the first tamoxifen versus nil studies, they really saw very little at five years. And it wasn't until 10 and 15 years the survival benefits came through. So it may be a, a bit early for the aromatase inhibitors. And Another thing is we're really not expecting to see quite the same increment in benefit as we saw with tamoxifen. We're seeing a smaller benefit of aromatase inhibitors over tamoxifen. So that, that was, I think, uh, important. It set the scene for then a number of other specific questions were asked by individual trials. Um, perhaps the most important one that came through, most people I've spoken to, was the data from Big 198 that uh, Dr. Moritzen uh, from Denmark presented where for the first time we had some data on um, the switching trial. These are rather sequencing trials of tamoxifen followed by letrozole or letrozole followed by tamoxifen versus letrozole now being seen as the gold standard. And in neither case was the switching, or sequencing rather, um, even I have trouble over that, the sequencing, um, better than the aromatase inhibitor uh, on its own. So that, that was... Um, really quite a, an interesting and an important session. Is there any new info on uh, cell cone resistance to hormones at all? I don't think anything very big is coming through at the moment. Um, one thing that seems to become more and more important the longer we look at it is the estrogen receptor itself and the quantity of estrogen receptor. Um, in our own work, uh, the degree of benefit or the degree of responsiveness uh, of a tumour seems to be very much dependent on the estrogen receptor levels. If you don't have high levels of estrogen receptor, it's very difficult to get a major benefit from endocrine therapy. That, if you've got high levels, it doesn't mean you will definitely get endocrine benefit because there seem to be a number of mechanisms that uh, mediate against that actually um, being fully beneficial. And it's trying to understand that that uh, a lot of us are, are trying to achieve. I think one of the big issues here is we, we believe there are multiple mechanisms. And again, it's this issue of power. In these studies, clinical studies, you can only do correlations between a particular subtype, phenotype, and what happens clinically. And to get confidence in that, you need enough numbers. So um, one thing perhaps I could tell you about is that we've just launched in the UK a very large short-term pre-surgical study called POETIC, which is uh, the acronym stands for Perioptive Endocrine Therapy for Individualizing Care. And that's a 4,000 patient study where we're randomizing estrogen receptor positive uh, postmenopausal patients to receive an astrozole or letrozole, and it, we don't choose which, versus no treatment in the two weeks before surgery. Um, and we will be determining whether that has an impact in the long term, but particularly looking at the molecular changes which occur in the biopsies we get to pre-treatment and, and at surgery. Um, and that should allow us to begin to really break into these um, subgroups because we'll then have thousands 
of, of biopsies to work with and we'll have the changes that occur over that period as a surrogate measure of benefit in the long term uh, from the, the inhibitor. So I think that's, for me, that's the most exciting um, potential area of breaking into this in, in a real fashion. On that area of um, UK research, do you think that uh, the European cancer research is catching up with or even overtaking American research? I mean, are Europeans here to, to teach or to learn, do you think, on the whole? Well, area? I think um, in terms of funding, the, the Americans are still ahead of us, for yeah. sure. In terms of organization, then things like the Breast International Group are, are really setting a scene, and, and uh, I'm on the board of directors of the Breast International Group. We have a, a meeting each year with our intergroup partners in America, and that's seen very much as a meeting of equals. In terms of this particular conference, I think you'll find that the Europeans, and actually the, the UK in particular, um, punches well above its weight. And if you look at the, for example, um, the first presentation, plenary presentation this morning, is my colleague Stephen Johnston. The award was given by uh, to Doug Easton from Cambridge. Um, we've done very well at, in, in this conference, and I think it shows the strength of breast cancer research in the UK and Europe generally. It certainly um, seem to be producing at least to our weight, and I'd say above it.